Yankee Doodle Dandy is the first one out of the gate. Caratage is right there shortly after the start. On the outside, Alt Soberano, Roy Saint near the rail, that's got the black cap. Seattle Skyline, that's at the orange cap, then out my way and Fantasy Art. On the outside of that one is Roy Real, that's racing about six or seven lengths off the leader. As they go towards the 700 meter region, then simply scrumptures. Behind that's King Django, Strummer and Silver Edge. About to be homeward bound, El Soberano, Yankee Doodle Dandy, the first one to move, Caratage on the outside. And then between runners we find Roy Saint on the outside, Seattle Skyline out my way. Then comes Fantasy Art, coming to the 300, El Soberano, Yankee Doodle Dandy, down the inside, Simply Scrumptures, out my way is also running on. El Soberano and Yankee Doodle Dandy from out my way and Simply Scrumptures, El Soberano, Yankee Doodle Dandy. And he's nothing in it. They're going to hit the line. Oh, very close. Can't split them. Yankee Doodle Dandy, El Soberano, and then Simply Scrumptures. Well, this horse, El Soberano, he always gets involved in close finishes. And once again, yeah, very close. El Soberano and the blinkered Yankee Doodle Dandy Neurostars. Very close indeed. El Soberano's on the inside. Yankee Doodle Dandy Neurostars as they come down to the line. El Soberano, Yankee Doodle Dandy. And the line is approaching and it goes to... Not going to give a decision still. So wait for the judges on that because you can't see the horse's head on the inside. And uh, we'll just wait for that. So let's wait for the judges. Yankee Doodle Dandy number seven. And on the inside, El Soberano. They don't show us a photo here. So we can't tell. Then simply scrumptures. And they were followed by Out My Way and Seattle Skyline. Tote favorite is number seven, Yankee Doodle Dandy at 3.30. El Soberano is at 6.20. Caratage is further back in the run and then came behind that one fantasy odds so we'll take a look at the head-on if Anton arrives that's his fourth winner and El Soberano is looking for his fourth winner of his career they have a terrific struggle they were both prominent when they turned for home El Soberano that's 60 and a half less the acclaim of one and a half and Yankee Doodle Dandy the stickers in the left hand they get very close together and we'll just wait for the judge's decision just looking across there is no result up as yet and I'm trying to keep you on the air for a result to flash up but no such luck as yet back to the studio. Well a good win here for number one Al Soberano from the Tony Riverland stable and uh, you're gonna have to feel for the guys that were on number seven Yankee Doodle Dandy uh, it could have gone either way on the line and Eagle Eye couldn't commit but the judge would have had a good look at that photo and uh, he's seen it one beating number seven giving Tony Rivel in a double quartet numbers one seven twelve and five but let's get uh, Tony in and uh, firstly I want to touch on on this horse and uh, I don't know if he was too high up in the ratings or he was just a horse that's been so unlucky throughout his career Hasn't he just teased? You know, he hasn't won a race for three years, and early in his career, after he won his second start, he was beaten three times or shorted, and I think he went up 20 pounds. It was just too much for him, you know? He raced his guts out, and unfortunately, as the handicapper says, he's so consistent, he's always there. It's hard to drop him a lot, you know, because he's running close to his ratings, you know? So for this horse in particular, I'm delighted, you know, and for all my guys that own this horse, with, we all own this horse together, um, you know, he's been such a soldier, he's the most beautiful looking horse, and um, I think he's the best Al Maktim, and I've got to say well done to Diego, I thought it was a grace ride, you know, he, he's not lucky either, from a bad draw with a big weight, you had to use him up a little bit, you sure, know, and, sure. and often that's what beats him, but um, well, I'm just thrilled, I'm thrilled, really for this, this horse I'm thrilled, you know. You know, you know, Anton actually headed him, that's the way I saw it. He did, strange enough he headed him, and on the line, at, <laughs> this time it went his way, three times DZ has been beaten short, we've time. come here and it's we were there. <laughs> it's about time. <laughs> it's about time, yeah. How's the mood now going into the last? Great, wonderful. Uh, going into the, the last. is just, just the draw DZ, 12 out of 12, it's not easy. He's a good horse, but, you know, 12 out of 12. Well, we'll give our best to all the guys here, see some of all the... Of the My the, mates. Ian. Westfield did.
I mean, it's Arthur Potts, uh, yeah, all my mates. All the, some of the Ferrari someone. boys. Yeah, no, not the Ferrari boys. Well done, yeah. Thank you, Dees. Lovely, Tony. Let's get Diego in. And uh, Diego, whilst we feel for the guys that backed uh, the second horse, I must compliment you on this one. Thank you so much. Because uh, from where I was watching, I thought Anton's got your number now when he moved up on the outside. Yeah, 100%. That's the first thing I asked him as soon as we got over the line. Did you get it? And he said, yeah, I think I've got it. But um, I'm just glad the, the judges have put it in my favour and uh, that this horse has got his head down first. It looked the right field for him. He's raced against much stronger, but he still had to get the job done. And this could obviously build his confidence as well. Yes, I mean, I don't think there's any other horse that's more deserved than this horse. I mean, I think it's been something like 989 days since his last win. Um, and he's just such a hard knocker and what a beautiful animal to work with. And um, I'm just glad he's put it together today and just put, it, uh, put his best foot forward where it matters most. You got there easily from the wide draw to the front where he's happy racing, but then you had a fight on your hands. Yeah, 100%. Um, you know, there was no speed in the race and Mr. Rivlin said to me I should just, uh, you know, try and take him to the front and di dictate myself. And um, he did just that. I mean, he's lost a little bit of his speed as he's gotten older. But nevertheless, he, he did it. Eh? Well, well done. Good ride. And uh, you can go and share a Coke now with Anton and discuss the finish. Yeah, 100%. Thank you so much. Just before I leave, you know, a big thank you to Mr. Rivlin. He's been giving me a few chances lately and I'm glad to crack my maiden for him now. Um, as well as to the owners, you know, they've really put up with this horse and I'm glad that it's paid off. 50 in sight. Uh, yes, that's 47 today. Well, you're right there, Diego. All the best with this one. Thank you so much. Well done. Diego Degaveo, number one, El Sobrano. 1712 and 5. And coming up next is the race that closes off the place accumulator and pick six, race number eight, and a sweetener to close off our meeting. 108,723 ran added to that quartet pool estimate. 650,000 ran. All that will come up in race number eight.